Thank you very much for um, inviting me here uh, today. Uh, this is a really um, opportune time. Uh, and when I got the invitation uh, from Ritu, I couldn't uh, resist accepting. Uh, we have a new government in power, as you know, after 10 years. Um, and um, higher education uh, remains one of the critical areas uh, in the country. And so this gives me an opportunity to talk uh, and present my views about the focus that the new government needs to have on higher education and the kinds of steps that we would uh, need the new government to take to revitalize uh, and reform the sector and to gain some momentum on the development of higher education in the country. So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to not speak for long, uh, leave some time for question and answers, but I'm going to very briefly talk about a seven-point agenda that um, I would recommend to the new government uh, with respect to higher education, uh, and then we can get into some of the more details in the question and answer session. So as the country becomes more and more dependent on higher education for economic growth and social transformation, uh, it is imperative, it is absolutely imperative that improving higher education is one of the government's immediate priorities. The problems of the sector are generally well known. Um, I won't go into them in great detail. Uh, and a lot of the solutions have already been discussed extensively at uh, various uh, fora as well as uh, in the government organizations, the planning commission, and many of them embedded in the 12th five-year plan itself. But a lot of those changes require long-term systemic changes uh, in the structure of higher education I'd like to focus on seven action points that the government can undertake in the near term, which will not only significantly impact the sector in the short term, but will also have long-term implications for the growth and success of higher education. So the seven points, uh, beginning what I believe uh, is the most important, which is first, the government and the industry as a whole. So this is not just a government effort, but it has to be an industry-wide effort. Must launch a concerted faculty development program. Shortage of faculty, particularly well-trained faculty, is one of the biggest, if not the biggest problems in higher education in India today. The scale of the problem is significant. We need to double the number of faculty from the current 8 lakhs to 16 lakhs in the next five years. But the country's universities only award about 15,000 degrees every year. So the gap between what the need of the growth of higher education is and the raw talent that is being produced in the country for faculty uh, is considerable at this point. Uh, most institutions, therefore, have to rely on students with master's degrees to fill their teaching requirements. Um, the shortage of, significant, uh, of doctorates uh, significantly impacts research institutions like the Indian Institutes of Technology, which currently face about 40% shortage in faculty today, uh, or the Indian Institutes of Management or Science, um, the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore has over 100 vacant faculty positions today. Uh, and the Indian Institute of Management in Ahmedabad is for the first time considering hiring uh, faculty who only have master's degrees and enrolling them in doctoral programs in their institution because they can't find enough pre-qualified PhD students to take on the role of faculty in the country. Even so, Despite all of these efforts, there are about half of the faculty in central and state government institutions, uh, faculty positions are currently vacant. So a multi-pronged effort to increase the number of faculty and improve their research and teaching capabilities must be launched immediately. This involves several, multi several initiatives which must take place simultaneously. First, we must continue to establish national and international training for current and faculty members. 
Uh, we already have a, uh, uh, a network of academic staff colleges. Uh, they have not performed as well as we had expected. They need to be revamped and need to be expanded as well. I also believe that every university in the country, we have 600 universities in the country, every university in the country must have a faculty development center and some of them, to the extent possible, should have international collaborations as well. Um, we need to remove the constraints on the hiring of international faculty. We just don't have enough in the country, so we need to be able to hire international faculty, but the ability to do so is constrained often by um, the regulatory structure and the personnel policies in most of our universities. And we need to do that and remove that very quickly. And finally, we need to take our most promising undergraduate students and fast track them into doctoral programs. So this is a multi-pronged effort that, we, that I believe needs to be launched uh, simultaneously by institutions as well as by uh, the governments, both the state governments as well as the central government. Secondly, and there is already some progress in this area, uh, we need to implement a nationwide uh, accrediting system and we need to make accreditation mandatory for all institutions of higher education, both public and private. An accreditation system sets standards and ensures that the quality of higher education that is delivered by academic institutions uh, meets the minimum standards required uh, to award degrees in the country. The expansion of the system to this extent will require increasing the capacity of the existing accreditors, both NAC and the NBA, but it also requires establishment of independent accrediting agencies that can take on the task. And one final point on accreditation is that accreditation and evaluation of institutions should be based on a classification system designed around the missions of these institutions. We cannot say that the same accrediting standards apply to, uh, let's say, uh, an affiliated college of Charan Singh University in Uttar Pradesh and the Indian Institutes of Technology, let's say, in, um, uh, in Delhi. Right? These institutions have different missions. They have different objectives. And they must be held to standards that are uh, commensurate with their uh, missions uh, and not treated uh, in the same way. Thirdly, we must begin the process of moving government financial support of higher education from an institution-based to a student-based regime. Today, the government invests large amounts of money and gives it directly to institutions. Institutions then provide subsidized education to students. Uh, this leads to a system where students have little control or say in what they might be able to achieve uh, in their education. Um, by, moving, by establishing a comprehensive student financial aid structure, including need and merit-based scholarships uh, provided by the commercial sector but underwritten by the government, we will begin to give uh, Indian students the, the choice of where they want to go and study, to be able to use that financial support and to be able to select the institutions that they want. Uh, in tandem, institutions should be allowed to set tuition and fees to better approximate the real cost of the education that they provide. Fourth, we must expand the focus on state institutions. Really, the key to solving the problem of higher education requires widespread reform and improvement of higher education in the state systems. The central government institutions uh, educate less than 5% of, of, the, of the students in this country. The rest of them are educated in state institutions. With the launch of the Rashtriya Uchya Shikshan Abhiyan, or RUSA, the government has already recognized the importance of uh, the role played by states in higher education. Um, and, but RUSA needs to be very quickly and effectively implemented. There's no doubt we have great plans. We've always had good plans. Our plans are very well written and they've got good objectives. But we have always consistently failed to underachieve the objectives of our planning process. Uh, we cannot afford to fail as far as RUSA is concerned, so I would call for very effective and efficient and quick implementation uh, of RUSA. 
the other problem with the, the, the one problem with RUSA today is that the scheme currently covers only state public institutions, so state government uh, institutions, whereas more than half the students in the country today are educated in state private institutions. And so the scope of RUSA must be expanded to include private institutions uh, as well. Fifth, um, we need to also focus on raising the high, the, the high level quality of our existing good institutions. Uh, I would call for the government to identify 25 to 30 existing institutions, both in the public and private sector, uh, that have the potential to be top research institutions and give them special funding to develop world-class research infrastructure, hire top faculty from across the world, uh, and rebuild their infrastructure to support their research and teaching programs. We continuously lament the fact that no Indian institution is ranked in the top 200 universities of the world, and a targeted effort is needed to vault India's best institutions into the ranks of the world's best institutions. Sixth, uh, in addition to the creation of top research institutions, we need a broader effort to promote research in all institutions that have postgraduate and doctoral programs. <clears throat> As part of this effort, um, I would recommend the establishment of a national research fund to be administered by an agency chartered to promote research and scholarly activity uh, in the country. A critical component of this reform must be the elimination of the distinction between public and private universities with respect to research funding in the country. Finally, I would strongly advocate the process of building closer ties between industry and academia. Uh, the panel that's going to follow me is going to talk in more detail uh, about the business of education and the relationship between uh, industry and academia. Uh, this must really be a very pr uh, important priority area for the new government. Um, I was part of a planning commission um, task force uh, that was uh, chartered with developing uh, a council for industry and higher education collaboration. Uh, that report uh, has, is now currently with the planning commission uh, and I would uh, strongly recommend the new government to take up uh, the effort to establish uh, such a council in the near, near future. Um, there are, of course, several other important changes that must be introduced in the sector, uh, reform of the governance system, promotion of institutional autonomy, restructuring the system of faculty appointments and promotions, reviewing student admission processes, uh, setting the criteria for curricular and pedagogical reforms, and the smart use of technology, both inside the classroom as well as for the development of in institutional administrative structures. And finally, we must boost, boost investment, private investment, both commercial and philanthropic in the sector. But I believe that if the government can begin to, new government can begin to initiate actions on the seven points that I've identified, I think we'll set ourselves on the road to developing a robust and high quality higher education system. Thank you very much.